In the next two slides, we'll be looking at how to estimate rock volume. We can think of the gross and net rock volume as the size of the container. In the volumetric equation, there are three terms that go into this. There's the area and the height, the height being the isochore thickness of the, re of the reservoir section. And when we want to go to net rock volume, we add the term the net to gross. Let's take a look at our map and cross section of our example oil field. Looking at the map view, we see that our trap is a four-way anticline and we have this oil water contact which limits the area of our accumulation and we've calculated that as 8,235 acres. Let's take a look at this in cross-section view. We can see the anticlinal structure, the top and the base of the gross reservoir section. Here's the oil water contact in green so this is what limits our accumulation area. We also have a gas oil contact and with a small gas cap at the crest of the structure. The height of the gross reservoir section is 100 feet of constant thickness across the structure. The bright yellow in here is our good quality sand that's within the gross reservoir section. In this area here, the sand represents 80% of the gross reservoir section, or we could say our net to gross is 0.8. And as we move off to the northwest, we see that the net to gross decreases. Note that the cross-sectional shape of our field is roughly a cone. This is important in the following slide. In part one of the tutorial, we saw how we could estimate the gross rock volume using the map-based approach. There are three other ways of doing this, however, and we'll go through it on this slide. But first, let's go through some of the terminology. The area of the hydrocarbon accumulation is limited by the hydrocarbon water contact, where it intersects the top of the reservoir. The length from the oil water contact to the highest point of the trap is called the column height. The area defined by the trap and the oil water contact in this cross section is the gross trap volume. And the area that is roughly cone shaped here that is below the base of the reservoir is the waste rock volume. If we take the waste rock volume and subtract it from the gross trap volume, what will be remaining is the gross rock volume. There are three other methods for estimating the gross rock volume. James et al. 2013 gives a very good description of these methods. There's the shapes method, there's a graphic method, and there's the depth area thickness method. We'll briefly discuss these. As I mentioned earlier, that the shape of our trap was roughly a cone shaped. So if you made a cone fitting the top of the reservoir and the top of the waste zone and subtracted them, we could get to the gross rock volume. In most cases, one shape would not fit the entire trap. So we may use a cone for the top portion of the trap and trapezoids for the flanks. There are a number of published shapes that have been shown with the formulas for calculating areas of these shapes that can be used in this method. Let's talk about the graphic technique. So in this chart, we see that we have subsea depth on the y-axis and the area between the contours that we planimetered on the x-axis. So each of the horizontal lines on this grid represent a contour interval. So we know this is the depth and we know from the planimetering the area between the contours. And we plot that for the top of the reservoir. And in this case here we had a hundred feet constant thickness so we just went down a hundred feet for the base. So on this grid on our plot we have the area 
between each of the grid lines and we know the thickness and area times thickness gives us our volume so each grid cell in our background is a particular volume so if we count up the grid cells within this area we can graphically estimate the gross rock volume the depth area thickness or DAT method is very similar to the graphic technique but in this case we maintain a table of the planimetered area between the contours and the th average thickness along the contour lines and with that table we can then calculate the gross rock volume more details on how we do the shapes graphic and DAT technique are demonstrated in our companion Excel workbook